Melanie Strider, a young woman, is escaping from people who've turned into aliens thanks to parasitic takeover. You can tell these alien humans by the shiny rings in their eyes. These aliens, called Seekers, now control humanity and are chasing down anyone who won't let them use their bodies as hosts. Melanie finds herself trapped with no escape. She decides to jump out the window because she'd rather die than be taken over by a Seeker. But surprisingly, she survives the fall. The Seekers then bring her to a place where a healer helps her recover and even gives her an alien soul. When Melanie wakes up, this new soul takes charge of her body and she adopts the name Wanderer. Melanie's mind fights against Wanderer's control, but she's powerless as Wanderer digs into her memories. Wanderer shares details with a Seeker about Melanie's dad, who chose to end his life rather than be captured by Seekers. Melanie also recalls running away with her little brother, Jamie. At night, Wanderer has a dream about another memory. Melanie was raiding a house when a young boy named Jared appeared. They became close friends and ended up living together with Jamie. Wanderer spills the beans about Jared to the Seekers and even draws his face, making Melanie mad. Despite Melanie's anger, Wanderer keeps digging into her memories to help the Seekers. But when she stumbles upon a special memory of Jared and Melanie sharing a moment, feeling Melanie's emotions, she starts understanding her. From then on, Wanderer refuses to share any more info with the Seekers. Wanderer glimpses a desolate landscape from Melanie's memory and hastily sketches it. Melanie warns that sharing this information will put Jared and Jamie in danger, and she fights to take back control of her body. Eventually, Wanderer agrees to tear up the paper to protect them. The Seekers understand that certain people can strongly resist their control. They realize that Melanie is one of those who resist giving Wanderer too much information. So, one of the Seekers decides to transfer to Melanie's body tomorrow to extract the information directly, while Wanderer will be moved to a more cooperative host. Melanie, in a panic, urges Wanderer to act. With the Seekers guarding their door, they decide to escape by leaping off the balcony into a pool. Wanderer politely asks a man for a car, surprising Melanie who planned to steal one. Initially agreeing to head to Fort Worth to meet Wanderer's healer, Melanie hesitates, fearing the Seekers might find them there. She fights for control to drive the car to her brother and Jared, resulting in a crash. Left with only a small bottle of water, they must trek through the scorching desert. Melanie instructs Wanderer to cover their tracks after walking for a long time. They collapse, but fortunately, a group of humans led by Melanie's uncle Jeb discovers them. Though the group wants to kill Melanie right away, Jeb intervenes because she's his niece. Melanie is brought to their hidden cave in the mountains where Jared and Jamie also reside. The surviving humans don't treat Melanie well since they believe she's dead and see the soul now in her body as a complete stranger. Meanwhile, the Seekers find Melanie's damaged car and decide to organize a search party to cover larger areas of the desert in order to find her. In the Resistance group, Kyle and Ian try to kill Wanderer, thinking she'll lead the Seekers to them eventually, but Uncle Jeb fires a warning shot. Jared, still hostile toward Wanderer, tells Uncle Jeb to keep Jamie away from her. However, unbeknownst to them, Jamie has been watching Melanie through a hole in the caves, he talks to her, but he believes Wanderer is just pretending to be kind to him. The following day, Uncle Jeb decides to call her Wanda for short, he takes her through the caves to the underground river, where she can bathe, then they visit the wheat plantation underground, which captivates her. The underground plantation uses large mirrors to reflect sunlight. While the Seekers search party scouts outside for signs of humans, Jeb hears helicopter sounds and quickly orders everyone to close the mirrors. This shields their location from the Seekers just in time. He allows Wanda to walk with Jamie, and he brings her to see the glowworms and asks if Melanie is still inside. Wanderer confirms it but asks Jamie to keep it a secret. Meanwhile, Jared, Kyle, and other humans head outside to buy supplies. They see a Seeker cop approaching but are prepared. They knock him unconscious and stash him inside the truck. The next day, Wanda wakes up to Uncle Jeb asking her to help harvest wheat. Ian watches her at first, then starts flirting with her. Melanie objects to Wanda's interaction with him. Meanwhile, Aaron and Brant, two humans buying supplies outside, drive over the speed limit, prompting Seeker police to chase them. With nowhere to escape, they crash to prevent their bodies from becoming alien hosts. Jared and Kyle, saddened by the loss of their friends, head back to the caves but are pursued as well. The female Seeker tries to shoot them, but the bullet accidentally hits one of her own kind. Another Seeker believes this action has gone too far, as Seekers typically don't kill each other. 
Back in the caves, Wanda shares stories about her journey from outer space with the humans. She tells them that there are 12 other planets with intelligent life. Jared finds them, furious about Aaron and Brant's deaths caused by the aliens. While Wanda is getting closer to Ian, he proposes that she stay with him for safety. Later, Jared approaches Wanda to talk, promising Ian not to harm her. He shares his sadness about another mind in Melanie's body, then unexpectedly kisses her. Melanie, disliking it, instinctively slaps Jared, convincing him that Melanie is still alive. Shocked by what happened, Wanda hides near the underground river, where Kyle almost kills her again, but she survives and even saves Kyle from falling into the river. In the doctor's room, Jeb, Jared, and Ian question them, but Wanda doesn't confess that Kyle was trying to kill her, even though everyone already knows it. Jeb tells Kyle to go get more supplies with Jared, while Ian takes Wanda outside for a walk, he attempts to kiss her, but Wanda confesses that Melanie wouldn't approve of his feelings as she loves Jared. Ian asks if Melanie could give them some privacy, but Wanda isn't sure. Back in the caves, Wanda notices Jamie limping from the doctor's ward, claiming he's fine, but she senses he's lying. She rushes to the ward and finds out Jamie is being sent away because he's helping separate human hosts from the souls. Seeing her kind dead and separated from their hosts, Wanda screams in shock and flees. Later, Jeb visits her room and assures her that he wouldn't allow all humans to be taken by the aliens. He agrees not to capture more hosts if that's what Wanda wants. He also informs her of Jamie's worsening condition, with his wound infected. Wanda panics, especially since Melanie has been absent from her thoughts for three days. She tries to provoke her by kissing Ian again, but it doesn't work. Fortunately, Melanie returns when Jared kisses her. She asks Jared to take her to the city to steal medicines from the Seekers. She pretends to have a cut, steals the medicine, and just before leaving the medical facility, she notices a container holding a soul. She takes it. Jamie gets cured, and the humans welcome him back with joy. Now that they have an alien with them, the humans don't need to steal supplies anymore. Wanda can get as many supplies as she wants from the store. On their way back home from the store with Ian and Jared, they come across the determined seeker searching for Wanda. Jeb appears from behind and shoots her, but she's quickly healed at the doctor's ward. Confused, she wonders why Wanda and the humans didn't kill her. Wanda explains that she doesn't want to kill her and asks why she was so desperate to find her. The Seeker responds that they need to fight for their species and can't get along with humans. Wanda meets with the Doctor and reveals the secret of safely separating the host from the soul. He agrees to do it with one condition. He will separate her from Melanie's body and let her die. Wanda told them, when the humans attempted to forcefully separate the souls, but it didn't succeed because the souls sensed the threat. Wanda convinces the soul to leave the host willingly through kindness. They successfully perform the separation on the Seeker, whose host's actual name is Lucy. Lucy's consciousness had been resisting her soul for years, which is why she, as the Seeker, was after Wanda and Melanie. Wanda brings the Seeker alien to a space travel site for souls and sends it to a distant planet away from Earth. Later on, Wanda bids farewell to Ian, believing it's best for her to die. She feels she's had a meaningful life with him and the other humans, rather than taking away another host's life, as she closes her eyes. The doctor prepares to perform the separation procedure. However, she wakes up alive, surrounded by Melanie and the others. She now occupies a new body, that of a young girl with short hair, disappointed with the doctor for breaking his word and taking another human's life. They explain that her previous host was brain dead after the separation from her soul. The only way for her to survive is to merge with Wanda. Melanie states that they saved a life instead of ending it. Later on, Melanie, Jared, Ian, and Wanda are driving when a group of Seekers captures them. They vow to stick together and not allow anyone to be taken. The Seeker interrogating them looks into their eyes and asks Wanda if she's a prisoner of the humans. Wanda denies it. And then the group of people getting closer reveals they are also human survivors, surprisingly. The Seeker with them has switched sides and joined the humans.